Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first ever episode of Journeyman Gaming. I figure for this first one, we're going to start with a game I play a lot in my off times, Mountain Blade Warband. I've got over a thousand hours in this one, maybe over 1500. So, I figure we'll start a new game and show you the ropes. Okay. Welcome, adventurer, to Mountain Blade Warband. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Remember that in the traditional medieval society depicted in the game, war and politics are usually dominated by male members of the nobility. That does not, however, mean that you should not choose to play a female character or one who is not of noble birth. Male nobles may have a somewhat easier start, but women and commoners can attain all of the same goals, and in fact may have a much more interesting, if more challenging, early game. Now, as I am, as I am male, I'm going to pick a male character since sometimes I might want to talk in character, and it's easier for me to do with a guy than with a girl. Woman. Man. Woman. Okay, select your character's gender. Male. You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was. I'm gonna go straight up merchant on this one. They have more money in the start, and more chances to upgrade their gear right in the beginning. You were born the son of traveling merchants, always moving from place to place in search for a profit. Although your parents were wealthier than most and educated you as well as they could, you found little opportunity to make friends on the road, living mostly for the moments when you could sell something to somebody. You started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as shop assistant. As a boy growing out of childhood, you apprenticed to a wealthy merchant, picking up the trade over years of working shops and driving caravans. You soon became adept at the art of buying low, selling high, and leaving the customer thinking they got the better deal. Then, as a young adult, life changed as it always does. You became a goods peddler. Of course. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. Heeding the call of the open road, you traveled from village to village, buying and selling what you could. It was not a rich existence, but you became a master at haggling. Even the most miserly elders seemed to give you a good price. Soon, you knew, you would be well placed to start your own trading empire. But soon, everything changed and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. What made you take this decision was... We're going to go for a big army in this game. I'll explain more about that as we get to it. So I'm going with lust for money and power. Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. To everyone else, it's clear that you're now motivated solely by personal gain. You want to be rich, powerful, respected, feared. You want to be the one whom others hurry to obey. You want people to know your name and tremble whenever it is spoken. You want everything and you won't let anyone stop you from having it. Now let's become an adventurer and ride to our destiny. So, oh, saving policy. We'll go realistic. I'll admit, my... Difficulty policy these days on this game at least has been pretty harsh full damage high speed Everything as you can see here's our starting attributes because we're a trader. We're not all that strong So we've only got six strength now. I like to go with about 50 health to start with so I'm gonna boost this by three that puts me up at 44, but It also lets me take the iron flesh skill up to three for each point in iron, iron Flesh, you get two extra hit points. So, one, two, there's our 50. And at high levels, I mean at high difficulty levels, one hit point can make the difference between finishing a battle and falling over. Uh, let's see. Agility can stay at six. This is going to be a mounted run. We're going to be on horseback, so we don't need athletics at least. Riding's already at level three. That's enough for a charger. I'm thinking this run will be a knight. I'll get more to that. I mean, you should already know if you're watching this what a knight is, but we'll get more to the particulars on that for the game later. Right now, intelligence can stay at 3, at 9. Uh, inventory management is probably, for us, the biggest skill for that. That's at 3 already. It's a decent start. It's plus 6 inventory spaces for each level, so 18 extra for trade. That's not bad. Charisma? Okay. In the beginning of the game, we're going to pump everything we can into Charisma. Like it, other than those three strands. Because we want leadership skill. Every point to charisma adds plus one to your max party size. Every point to leadership adds plus five. It also decreases 
the wages you pay to your troops by 5% and boosts your base morale by 7. So, already at 3, we're looking at 15% less wages to people, and uh, that's 3 coins knocked off of every 20 we would pay, and an extra 15 troops under our belt right off the bat. So, definitely a good thing to take. Okay, for filling out skills, first off, weapon points. As you use weapons, they will get better. Uh, with the melee weapons, they get better with damage inflicted. With the ranged weapons, they get better with the difficulty of the shot you make. But every time you level up, you get 10 points, so... We're going to put this in the pole arms. We're going to be a knight. We're going to be a lancer. We're going to want some serious... Those proficiencies, they mostly boost your speed and accuracy, not really damage. So, with this, it boosts how fast we can stab with our spears. And that's, that's useful. I, we don't need accuracy bonuses for the melee, that's more of a ranged thing. See, for the rest, let, let's pump up some of the damage. Every point to power strike gives us plus 8 damage, 8% 8 damage. So that's 24% damage boost right there. Let's see. Well, I would take shield, but because it boosts your shield's resistance to damage, also the shield coverage, like it simulates better skill with the shield and kind of gives you an invisible force field around it. But there's apparently a bug with that where shield affects everybody and not just you. So it makes it a little bit harder for you to hit enemies. I mean, that doesn't really matter for this run because we're going pure melee. But if I were going for archery, I would definitely not take shield. But instead, let's throw... We might get thrown from our horse, especially if we're facing archers. But riding, horse archery, looting... Let's boost the looting skill because that means extra gear. And uh, let's give ourselves a point to trainer. No. Let's, let's take a point to shield. We don't need it. No, no, because we will probably have some archers in our party and it'll probably affect them. So yeah, trainer. Because trainer, it's a passive skill. You can put it on everybody. You get companions in this game. They level up the same way you do. So... If you put trainer on everybody, then anybody who's lower level than all of you is going to get a serious experience boost every day. Uh, thinking about which country we want to work with, I'm going to go with the Swadians for this one, since we are knights. And uh, The Swadians, they're basically the German, the Franco-German Empire of sorts. Knights are their specialty like mounted soldiers in general are. They have men at arms and knights and they are the best for them. Uh, Johan, John, Johan, Von, that's German for of, I think. My, any German followers who might see this can explain that better. Uh, Jeroya is a country outside of the map. The map's called Calradia. Jeroya is a place that's mentioned by some of the non-player characters or NPCs and so it, we're supposed to be from outside of Calradia, so that's a good place I know of from there. Okay, let's get on with the character creation, the physical side. Uh, that looks like a good German. Hair, let's give him shorter hair. Mustache. That's probably a good one. I mean, yeah, that's a good look. Not crossbow, we are definitely getting rid of early on. Okay, age, let's let's keep him young. Hair color, blonde, that, that makes her a good German. I mean, I know they have all sorts of hair colors, but, you know, your stereotypical German's blonde. Okay, now as we are going to back Swadia in this one, let's just start in Swadia and work our way out. First off, you hear about Calradia, a land torn between rival kingdoms battling each other for supremacy, a haven for knights and mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, or glory. In this land, which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, 
You believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that finally you hold the key of your destiny in your hands, free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. Drawn by the stories you hear about Calradia and its kingdoms, you join a caravan to Praven, Kingdom of Swadia. You came by caravan through the heartland of Calradia. Green shoots of wheat, barley, and oats are beginning to push through the dark soil of the rolling hills, and on the lower slopes of the snow-capped mountains, herds of cattle and sheep are grazing on the spring grass. Occasionally, too, you catch sight of one of the great war horses that are the pride of the Swadian nobility. See? Horses. Lights. The land here is rich, but also troubled, as the occasional burnt-out farm bears witness. You keep a wide berth of the forests where desperate men have taken refuge, and it is some relief when you crest the ridge and catch sight of the great port of Praven, its rooftops made golden by the last rays of the setting sun. You are exhausted by the time you find the inn in Praven and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs of your neck on end. The rasp of a blade sliding from the scabbard. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Do a fight. No. If they're melee, I'm going to shoot them. If they're archers, I'm going to rush them. Archer, time to rush them. And there you go. And that is why you take the plus 24 damage to melee weapons. Bandit knocked out. Merchant of Praven. Are you alright? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can say the same for the other fellow. No, I'm pretty sure I only knocked him out. That's one less thief to trouble our streets at night, although heaven knows he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. Merchant takes you to his house. Once inside, he stands by the door for a while, checking the street, and then, finally convinced you have not been followed, comes near you to speak. Except I have to go to him. That's sad. <laughs> Merchant of Praven. Now, let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigands in the hills, driven to, by driven to banditry by war, debt, or love of violence. Recently, however, they've been getting bolder, leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town, looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us it's because of all the fighting on the frontiers, fewer men to keep an eye on the streets. But I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems to me that the most logical explanation is that these bandits have an ally inside the walls, who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week, you see, they took my brother. I don't know what my brother was thinking, a lad from a prominent house, out alone after dark in times like these. Well, I suppose you were too, but you're a stranger here, here, and didn't know how bad things have become. He had no such excuse, but he's family, so what can you do? If you don't protect your kin, then people will start thinking that you can't protect your investments either, and I can't have that. No doubt the gang will soon send word about a ransom, but I don't care to pay it. So here's my proposition. You look like you've had a bit of experience with a blade. More of a staff, really, but whatever. And more importantly, you must have a bit of fire in your belly, or you wouldn't be coming to Calradia to seek your fortune. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Gather a small party, track down these bandits to the lair, teach them a lesson they won't forget, and get my brother back safe. In return, you'll earn my lasting gratitude and a bit of silver. What do you say? Silver, please. I can't eat or sell gratitude. Sorry. I am interested. Ooh, 100 dinars right off the bat. You won't be able to do this by yourself, though. If you try and take on the whole gang single-handedly, the hunter will become the hunted, I'll warrant. You'll first want to round up a group of volunteers. There's always a few lads in the villages around here looking for a bit of work that's more interesting than tilling the soil or hauling water. They'll follow you if you pay. So take this purse of 100 dinars. Consider it an advance on your reward. Go round to the villages and use the money to hire some help. I'll reckon that you'll need at least five men to take on these bandits. Very good, sir. I'll go collect some men from around the villages. Probably not. <laughs> good. You can find me again in a tavern here in Praven after you get your group together. Then we'll speak about what we do next. Yeah, it's probably pronounced Praven. It's, it's German. I don't think Praven is the right one. Yep, your first quest. You may view a quest log any time in the game by Q. Let's do that. Yep, notes. Collect five men. Given by a merchant. 
Wants you to collect at least five men from nearby villages. Yeah, at least. Go for at least six, I think. If you just go with five, he doesn't want to do anything with you. Yeah. He is in a tavern at Proven. And you start off outside the town. Apparently, they were wandering in the streets despite living outside the town. Don't know why they even got in there that early. So, right off the bat, there's 12 looters. Now, I've also got a secondary horse. Let's see. No, the secondary horse has less speed, but better armor. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going with the Sumter horse for combat. This can be... I know, saddle horse is probably the one you're supposed to ride. This one's more for baggage. But, we'll go with this. A little bit of trade goods. The fish I'm keeping. Food. The rest of this can... Well, that's a little bit less money than we can use. But this should help with that. As you can see, I've got a crossbow. If I want to use it, I can definitely take on those 12 looters we just saw a little while ago. Staff. Great for dismounted, not so great for mounted combat. You can use it, but it's not nearly as good as... An actual lance or even just a regular spear uh, light armor I mean I've got 14 leg armor together these give me 22 body armor and 8 head armor you know let's see I'll put this stuff up here I don't think we've sated our bloodlust enough have we I think as long as I don't let the enemies hit me too much with the rocks they're going to throw, we should be good. But, I'll hit Proven first. Marketplace. Goods. Let's sell that excess. 235, 90. Nice little 325. 150, 148. Okay, a little bit too much. But you know what? We're going to get some soldiers. A little extra food won't hurt. Nah, not grain. <laughs> Somewhere rather, bread is cheaper than the grain. I think that's backwards. Oh well. Arms, because that slot for shield is in the arm slot. Old heater shield, wooden shield. Nordic shield. And I got a thousand gold. But right now we're just facing rocks. So let's rock out. Heater shield. Now that does change things up on foot. If you're using a staff. Because that means uh, you can't use it two-handed. Swing it side to side. You can only thrust with it. But if we're fighting ranged enemies. That shield's going to be a lot better than trying to parry them with the staff. So we'll go with that. For now, I'm going to go solo real quick. I want to show off mounted combat. And of course, we'll use the crossbow for a bit before... Second thought. I mean, we'd only get 21 from those combined. We've got enough money. Maybe we can... Okay. Thankfully... This episode, not monetized, but Bastard Sword really just means a sword that can be used two-handed or one-handed. And we're going to take one. Because, why the heck not? And we'll start off with the staff, for now. And then we'll work our way up to the... No, no. We'll work, we'll get a better spear later on, or even now, bent jousting lance. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the lance, and then work our way. I know that's a bit expensive, but we're going to use it, it's going to earn its keep. Okay, now, let's go fight those looters. You better not be a manhunter. <sighs> it's your money or your life, mate. No sudden moves will run you through. That was a very bored looter. I'm not afraid of you lot. Fight me if you dare. Hey. Yep. 
1 versus 12. This can't go well at all. On this background, it might not. Okay. So first, this game does have a bit of an... It's not really an exploit because it's intentional, but yeah. You get a nice little radar screen there. It doesn't show you the background. Like, it doesn't show you the geography of the area. But it shows you the relative position of the enemy. Not that I need it. You can see right there in the distance what we're fighting. Well, I'd annoy them. Yes. This would have been a good battle for that, um... Crossbow. But... We can still go. What I'm actually hoping that we can level up a little bit off of this. Now, yay. Couch Lance. You just saw Couch Lance damage. Couch Lance actually triples the amount of damage you do with a lance. You also saw my horse get hurt for 36 damage. I made the decision to go without a crossbow. I don't regret it at all. Couch Lance triples the damage. It's kind of it's what jousters did. It just means you've got like a you hold the, you brace the lance so it faces forward. And then it just rams harder into the enemy. Yes, I did just totally high five that enemy with my sword. That one missed the high five. It's like, guys, I'm just trying to give you a high five with my sword. Don't you just, you know, hold up your weapons and let's do this already. Okay, so the horse decided to do it with his shoulder. But still, you could have played along. Ooh. That's right, keep throwing your stones at me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but handing you my sword kills you, so bring it. Let's see. Like I said, full damage. You can see right there. Normal, normal. That means they're dealing as much damage as I am. Good combat AI. I mean, it's AI, so it's questionable, but it's as good as it gets. Campaign AI and fastest combat speed. Is charged. Yay, looter killed. Yeah, when you're getting into melee like this, really use the horse. So when they're parrying like that, you can knock them off balance and just send them. Yep, just be careful. You don't want your horse to go down. It will probably be okay and recover, but you don't know that for sure. It could be injured and, you know, have to take time to recover in your inventory without being ridden. Or it might actually fall down dead. And, oh, yeah, no, he's not routed. Sometimes, if you do enough killing early enough and you, uh, do enough damage to them, they actually, see, that one may or may not actually be routing. Nope, nope. That one, now he might, yeah, see, he's not even headed for me. He is actually in a route. That means he's going to try to make it to the edge of the map, and if I let him, he'd actually disappear. Okay, last one of you. And, yeah, you can see, I'm actually getting all redded by this. There we go, level two. And plus one of my charisma. I can't really do much with that, charisma-wise, but I can start getting some prisoner management up here. Prisoner management. Yep. Increases the number of prisoners I can carry. Keep by five. You can sell them to ransom brokers. Uh, there's a stable ransom broker in tier named Ramoon. He's... He gives you a flat rate of uh, 50 dinars per head. With folks like looters and the low-level uh, faction troops, that's actually an upgrade to what everybody else would pay you. But... Once you get higher than that, once you get into like level 
two, maybe level three faction troops, or even the higher level uh, raider types, like sea raiders, thunder bandits, that kind. Uh, you definitely want to skip Ramoon and find the others, because... Wait. Yeah, there's still a survivor. I see him. Well, I was wondering why the game didn't say, You've won! Congratulations! Press tab to leave. That's not exactly what it says, but it says that it's the gist. But we'll see that in a second. Okay. Are you gonna run? Nope. But hey. Maybe. I actually want this guy to fall. Yeah, I think we couch lanced. Yeah, when we couch lanced them, I actually think that knocked them out because this is considered a blunt weapon. And that's specifically what you need to do to knock people out is use a blunt weapon on them. Ooh. Okay. You've been a little bit too annoying. I think I've got at least one of you. There we go. And now battle one. Press tab key to leave. Yep, one wounded. So, one looter captured. There we go. I'm still at 51% health. I mean, I'm not going to be the only one fighting, so soon. Hey, just check what do you get compared to what you have. Like 20, 22. I mean, it doesn't look as good, but it's an extra two hit points, an extra two defensive points. It helps. Yeah, eight's better than six, so we don't need to worry about these caps. Uh, it, it does look a little bit odd. I usually go with that, but it's only two points, and I can probably buy better. Yep, 225 dinars. Usually what I do is I go solo for the first 50 days in order to build up my character, because you get the maximum loot and the maximum experience by doing that since they're not sharing it with anybody, but for this run, as we are going hard difficulty and this is my first on-air game, let's go ahead and just jump into the army building, since that's kind of one of the big draws of this game. So first we'll sell off this stuff so we have a bit of extra cash on hand. Besides, we have a quest to build up a small army, so small crew posse really. So let's do this and maybe this battle will have paid for everyone we need. So we only need five or six. Now, he said to go to the villages. And yeah, we probably will go to the villages, but that's not the only thing we can do. If we go to the tavern, there's potentially... Okay. That's the merchant. That's a wandering bard. They're part of the marriage mini game you get in this game. Yes, there is a marriage mini game. It's not there. It's not really a thing. It's just it's there. And there's mercenaries, mercenary crossbowmen. So you know, shooters. Like I said, I don't want to take the shield skill because I might use people like this. There's, yeah, I could barely afford all six of them right here. They are expensive, and they're not really needed for this quest because the enemies are all going to be looters too. So we'll skip them. What I was looking for maybe getting was one of the companions. They are basically a computer controlled version of yourself. Each one has a backstory that you could pretty easily track on that questionnaire from the beginning. And uh, But you can control their equipment. Like you actually use the same kind of inventory screen for equipping them. And their levelage, they get a character sheet as well. And you can talk to them and open it up and see it. And every time they level up, you can tell them where to put their skills. So you definitely want as many companions as you can get because direct control, you're not beholden to the game's class system. But anyway, we didn't find... The only people we found were all way more expensive than I want to go for this quest since we're pretty much just rounding up a posse to kill some looters anyway. We didn't even find a ransom broker, darn it. There's six more looters. We might hunt them down after we get some troops. 
well, let's go visit a town, a village, and find some troops first. The village of Asgad seems unremarkable. The fields and orchards are busy, with villagers engaged in the tasks of the seasons. Humans and animals alike look re relatively healthy and well-fed. However, a small number of the outermost fields are left unsown, and some walls are in ill repair, suggesting that there are still not quite enough hands to do all the work which needs to be done. You remember that this village and the surrounding lands belong to Count Rayfarch of Kingdom of Swadia, and the populace is indifferent to you. All of that is dynamic, and it changes depending on situations, so it is kind of important to look at that. I mean, that can tell us that it's not the wealthiest place, it's not the poorest place. Um, not sure what the prosperity indexes are, I forget. There's like poor, very poor, and like wealthy, very wealthy, or something, rich and very rich, something. But each one of these tells you something about it. You know, who owns it? That is an actual lord in the game. You can meet him on the field, you can befriend him, you can do quests to help him, and he'll be nice, he'll be friendlier, more disposed to helping you out. You can also stab him in the back, fight him on the field, really tick him off. Uh, just stuff like that. Uh, populace is indifferent to you. If you do quests for the locals, or if you back them up when somebody else is raiding them, this will go up. If you take a hostile action, like, I'm not at war with these people, so I can't raid them. I can force them to give me supplies, and I can steal cattle. When I'm outright hostile with them, like even just negative and different with the faction at large, I can actually raid them, which means burning everything, take a whole lot of supplies, like rich stuff. There's definite reasons you might want to raid, but don't do it in a place you want to recruit from. Ever. It takes forever to rebuild that kind of relationship, and frankly it doesn't make much sense. So, recruit! Hey! Six recruits right off the bat. So we'll take them. We'll leave. Now there are seven of us. That's the minimum he'll let go on that mission. As we do have six looters within reach, maybe. Let's go see if they're still there. Hey, they don't seem to be, at least not that close. There they are. They're going at 4.5 speed. Let's see what we make. We make 6.1, so I'm not going to be in the thick of the fighting, probably. But let's give our guys a little bit of a boost. Surrender or die. As you wish, prepare to die. You've encountered looters. Seven of us. This is the rabble I've got. Everyone hold this position. I hold down F1 button. It lets you put up, pull up a position flag you can use to tell your troops where to stand. Uh, see, there's about nine levels of organization you can put your troops on. By default, only three are in use. One is infantry, swatting recruits are infantry. Two is archers, three is cavalry. The next six buttons all key up like unnamed one. That's not going to be used by default, but you can use it if you have different types of troops under your command. Like some like if you have spear infantry and axe infantry, you will probably want them on separate buttons because they fight different ways. Like spears are better used for standing in place and bracing and while other sorts of melee weapons are probably best used for running. And that's actually what I'm going to have my people do once the enemies are close enough that we can stay together as a group. You'll notice they aren't together. The enemies... Oh yeah, swatting recruit already... Heh. My guys must have stones. Yeah, three of my guys have stones and the other three have melee weapons. Lost a guy, so I'm def... Oh, lost two guys. So I'm definitely going to want to recruit from somewhere else, but at the same time... The survivors are going to be a lot tougher. Or can be tougher. For commands, you've seen F1 in action. There's also F1, F3 brings up charge. First hit F1, and then you hit F3. Yep. 
There we go. And, you know, they had... So, they had melee weapons. They had blunt weapons, some of them. So we have actual captives. Yep, two killed, four wounded. We did lose two of our recruits. That's not cool. But, as you can see, there's a plus by them. And that means that three of the four survivors can actually be upgraded to the next level. So, we'll take the looters. We'll actually wait on that till we finish the looting screen. Because if you remember from the last battle we fought, the uh, extra experience that gets spread out throughout the group doesn't hit until after the full battle's over. So, turn, see, 45 experience to me, 63 more experience to the party. Some people are upgradable. Maybe, no, only three, but because we went through that battle early, we've got three level two warriors, and we just need to recruit a couple more level ones, which we probably won't actually get just two people. We might get one in one village and have to go to another one. We might not get anybody and still have to go to another one. But we might get more. I mean, we might run into another six warrior group. Recruit volunteers. We got three. That's enough. So let's go to Praven. Proven. You say it either way. I'll probably switch between them as I go. Yeah, this isn't the entire game, but this game does get samey after a while, because the fighting is most of it. As you get better gear and as you get better at it, you there's definitely different things you can do. Like, you can be archer, you can be a horse archer, you can be regular cavalry, you can be infantry, and you can go around hunting down captives if you want, and, you know, selling them. I know, same place that we just went to, but now we have a reason to be here. A merchant. There we go. And the nice music chimes. Splendid work. You have hired enough men to take on the bandits. Now, travelers entering Proven have told us that there is a small group of robbers lurking on the outside of town. I suspect that they are all from the same band, the one that took my brother. Hunt them down and defeat them and make them disclose the location of their lair. Very well, I shall hunt, ban hunt for bandits. I'm getting paid. I don't expect the employer to actually come with us. Uh, yep, new quest taken. Learn where the hostages are held. Quest log. Updated. But really, anytime you see a group in that shade of blue, any shade of blue in a base game, really, it's a uh, quest group. There are, actually, there are quite a few quests that require you to hunt down specific groups. And it can be a pain when the group you're looking for is on the other side of the map from you. It does happen. And you will fail the quest if somebody else gets them first. So, let's make sure that doesn't happen in this case. What do you want? I've been looking for you. Tell me where you keep their prisoners and I'll let you go. Ha! Huh, those prisoners are only going free if you pay their ransom. Did you bring any silver? No, but I brought steel. I like that line. So there's seven of us against their four. And we're going to hold our ground here for the moment, while we figure out where the enemies are. Now, of course, your units already know where the enemies are. You do too, if you use radar map. Your soldiers are going to be lined straight for the enemy, no matter what is in the way. And in the base game, in most cases, the enemy are going to do the same thing. So you're better off finding a high place setting your troops up in it and of course we will actually hold our ground because we know the enemies are coming we have two maybe three people who yeah all three SWATI militia have crossbows in this case and shields as you can see there's not a guarantee that you're going to get a shield and a recruit there is also not a guarantee you're going to get a shield from a militiaman it's it's an item pool and it randomly picks from it just like there are some borderline classes between infantry and cavalry where sometimes you will get a horseman and sometimes you're going to get infantry. Which can be a pain when you've got them all classed as, since you have to class a unit type all together. 
as one sort, either cavalry or infantry or some kind of mixed group. So it really does get a bit annoying. We're just gonna have some fun here. Because you don't play Mountain Blade just to stand around on the hill. If you did, you'd be playing a total war game instead. <laughs> and there are some serious advantages to riding out on your own or having a cavalry group at your set to follow you with the F1, F2 command. You can aggro the enemy. So if you have a main aggro, aggressive, that means getting the enemies focused on you so they run after you. If you have a vulnerable line, you can actually extend their lifetime just by getting as many enemies as possible tied to. I spare me, spare my life, let me go and I'll go far away from here. I'll learn an honest trade, you'll never hear of me again. I'll spare your life, but in exchange you'll want information. Either the you or your mates kidnapped the brother of a prominent merchant in town. Tell me where you're hiding him, and give me your word that you'll stop troubling people of these parts, and you can go free. Oh, bless you, sir. Bless you. We've done the lad no harm. We've been keeping him in our hideout near El Elboro. I'll describe the area nearby in detail. There's so there's no mistaking it. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here, you overacting chump. <laughs> and yeah, we are gonna stop this episode with that quest, with the retrieve the brother quest. Actually, no. There's one more quest we're gonna take on just to finish this out. No, you'll notice we have to go. We quest-wise, we're supposed to go straight there. We're not supposed to stop off at the brother at the um, merchant. I'm just gonna sell this stuff off so I clear out my inventory space. Just because I have a lot of it doesn't mean I want to run out. Besides, I've got 755. I might be able to afford a little bit of armor. Not much, mind you. But, oh, actually. Yeah, that's fair trade. That's not really necessary. And of course, sturdy leather jacket. I don't need the extra plus one. If we're going to spend money on it, I'd want. That's out of my price range. But I like it. <laughs> Let's see. Got a helmet. Not looking to spend that much on this. Wait. Yeah. No, I think... Yeah, that's about all the armor we're going to be buying here. Right now. But it's a little bit of headgear. It helps. So, Elberl. Which isn't actually that far away, I don't think. It's right there. So, a bit of a... Okay. We're actually going to wait... Yeah, we're going to wait for the night, because dark, it's a little bit harder to see, and I want this recording to be okay. So, dawn has broken, time to travel. You know, I could have gotten there and camped out during the night, during the last of the night, and hit during the dawn. I'll probably do that in the future. Of course, this is a small band. It's... As you can see, it is pretty easy to get attacked. They are traveling probably slower than we will. Mountain bandits. They're not the best, and they're not the worst. Ten of those, unless I'm actively fighting and succeeding, especially with full damage on, probably a bit much for this particular crew. So we're going to run away and... Yep, see... They knew they'd be, you know, looters. We're on a time budget. We're going to hit the uh, quest first. Small group of looters. Y'all live today. Trying to avoid extraneous fights so we can get this quest and the next one done for this. Bid. Okay, attack the hideout. You approach the hideout. The looters don't appear to have spotted you yet, and you can still sneak away unnoticed. The difficult approach to the site down a narrow defile means that only a handful of troops in your party will be able to join the attack. 
and they will be unable to bring their horses. If your initial attack fails, the looters will easily be able to make their way escape and disperse. Do you wish to attack the hideout or wait for another occasion? Well, first thing, I think seven out of my eight will come with. I'm just going to make sure, yep, militia is on top, recruits on bottom. The, uh, you get reinforcement waves if you bring more soldiers than you can. Why not in this battle, but in regular battle. You get reinforcement waves if you bring more soldiers than you can use in one shot. But it goes top down, so I wanted to make sure that my militia troops were all here. Yeah, there's there's seven of us in the battle, so yeah, there's only one guy who didn't come in. He's a recruit, so he wouldn't have added much. And, okay, I'm going to set them to follow me. And we're just going to find and kill the bad guys. Obviously, my men already know where they are, or else they wouldn't be shooting. And the three shooters are probably going to lag behind, because they are going to keep actively shooting unless I tell them to stop. But I don't really want them to. Because anybody they kill in advance, somebody we don't have to face in melee. There we go. That's one of you down. It's like, that'll teach you to enter the battle shirtless. You're not Conan. No, you're just dirt poor. Oosh. Okay. Hey, wait. Did you guys already run out of ammo or something? Huh. Oh well. Knocked unconscious, so ha! <laughs> Recruits got... There we go. Now we've got control over this hill. We have control over the village. Like, just seeing it. But we're gonna have to face that opposite hill eventually. There are enemies up there. I think. There's usually enemies up there. Oh, uh, let's see. Of course, you can probably see where I am, but I can't because my game bar is sitting over top of it. I mean, one second. I'm just moving that there. Yeah, now I can see where I am. And there's definitely enemies across from me. Light even. Yeah, I know. What I'm looking at is a tree. But I see them up there in the distance. There's one. I could tell those soldiers to hold their fire until we're in position. Frankly, I should. Uh, let's see. Hold position. Follow me. Oh, there it is. But I think I'll let them do their thing because they've already killed something. Something. They've already killed someone. Now, on about bastard swords, I kind of interrupted myself there when I started talking about them. It just means two-handed, one-handed, in-game terms. That means you can wield them with a shield and get the nice defense bonus from a shield. But then... When you go two-handed after losing a shield or just deciding to put it away. Yeah, might help if I oriented myself on him. After putting it away, you actually gain a damage bonus from hitting two-handed. So, I definitely chase two-handed, one-handed weapons. I think the Holy Grail for a Malay guy is... Malay person is two-handed, one-handed, and with the trait, can crush through blocks. Because... Then, even if I'm high-fiving an enemy sword, as long as I hit with the head of my weapon, it will actually do damage, regardless. Whereas, if I'm high-fiving with something that can't crush through blocks, that's a total block. There we go. Merchants, thank you! Thank you, sir, for rescuing me from those fiends. Did my brother in Proven put you onto their, onto their track? Yes. I told him that I would find you. I advise you to return to your family as quickly as you can, and be careful on the road. With their retreat cut off, the looters fall one by one to your determined attack. Their hideout and their ill-gotten gains are, are now yours. Are now yours, but typo. Hmm. <laughs> Here on now. Okay. Yeah, two-handed, one-handed, 34 cut, 25 pierce. Will beat just about anything you're gonna get off these random bandit groups. So that was, to me, just a very good use of my money. 
better armor might have been a better use, but we'll, we'll get that over time as we fight. As we fight things that are better than that. Wait. Yep, upgrades. See? We've got one more Swadian Militia. And one more. Okay. Skirmisher. That's where you start focusing on the crossbows. These guys, they have... The knights are their main focus. They've also got crossbows for uh, ranged. They're decent. Their neighbors to the south, called the Ro Kingdom of Rodox, are master crossbowmen. They're based on the Italians. They've got master crossbows for their really mainstay. And they use uh, spear infantry basically as a blocking force. They live in mountains, so that's the fighting that works for them. For us, because we are Swadian, I'm going footman. Footman. Yeah. Man at Arms is the next one we want, because that is the first cavalry unit for them. And then from Man at Arms, it goes straight to Knight. They don't have very many tiers, it's more like, like side steps. Because you can go to Infantry, and then there's maybe one or more tiers after that. Sadly, the base game doesn't have a troop tree the way that some of the mods do. Some of the mods, you can open up a tree and you can actually see what each unit can upgrade to and you can follow the lines and just kind of plot out what you want each of your units to go to. Now, we're headed back. Yeah, we'll go through the night. You just don't want to stay still for too long in one place because you don't know what you're going to run into. Because as you saw, there were like 10 uh, mountain bandits. Mountain bandits probably have the best shields out of any of the bandit groups. Of course, they, they like two-handed weapons like mauls. Big hammers. Which is odd considering the shields. But, I know, I skipped all those nice little looters and things, bandits in the forest. I promise, next episode, we're gonna go clean that place up. But in this episode, first off, always sell off your loot. If you don't have a companion on you who can use stuff, sell it. Keep as clean an inventory as possible because you are going to run into a lot of bandit parties and you're going to want the space for more gear. Of course, after a while, we're going to stop even bothering with this vendor trash one point stuff. But for now, you know, every dinar kind of counts. Visit a tavern. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's the same. I think it resets every two or three days. So it's only been... This is the third day now. The merchant. Provin. Well, my brother is home safe. Not sure what to do with him. Maybe pack him off to a university outside Coloradia. That way, if he gets knocked out on the head, knocked on the head in a street brawl, no one can say it's my fault. But that's not your problem. Here's the rest of your reward. It was well earned. Shoot. The money is most welcome, and I am glad to have been of service. I didn't see how much it was. Probably somewhere around 200. Not much. Good. Now, are you interested in making some more? Possibly. What do you need? Remember how I told you that the bandits had an ally inside the walls? I think I know who it is. The captain of the watch, no less. Does make sense. He's the one making excuses. Some months ago, this captain, seeing the amount of profit we merchants were making from trade across frontiers, decided to borrow some money to sponsor a caravan. Unfortunately, like many who were new to commerce, he failed to realize that great profit only comes with great risk. So he sank all his money into the most expensive commodities, and of course his caravan was captured and looted, looted and he lost everything. He really didn't know how to escalate things, did he? As a consequence, it seems our captain turned to villainy to recoup his fortune. I suppose I'd do the same if, the heavens forbid, I ever face indebtedness and ruination. Now, any watch captain worth his salary will have a few thieves and robbers on his payroll to inform on the rest, but our captain decides to employ these bastards wholesale. He brings them into the town, lets them do as they will, and takes a share of their take. You've heard of poachers turning gamekeepers? Well, in the unfortunate land of Calradia, sometimes gamekeepers will turn poacher. Luckily, there's, there are still a few brave, honest souls in the watch who've told me how he works. Well, I mean, it's more like the, the, uh, 
poachers probably became gamekeepers and then just kind of never stopped being poachers on the side. But, hey, however the game wants to say it. Now, here's my plan. I could bring this to the attention of King Harlos, Lord of the City, but that would mean an inquiry, my word against captains, and witnesses can be bought and evidence destroyed, or maybe the whole thing will be forgotten if the enemy comes across the border again. And all I'll get for my trouble is a knife in the ribs. In time of war, you see, a king's eye wanders far from his domain, and his subjects suffer. So I've got another idea. I've got a small group of townsfolk together, some men in my employ, and some others who have lost relatives, these bandits, and we'll storm the captain's home and bring him in chains before King Harlos, hopefully with a few captured bandits to explain how things stack up. I can't promise to capture him, but I've got a bastard sword who wants to meet them. All I need now is someone to lead my little army into battle. I can't think of anyone better than you. So, what do you say? I say I need the money? How do I know that you're telling me the truth? Oh, well, I suppose it's possible that I found a dozen bandits who are willing to give their lives to give a passing stranger a false impression of life in Old Proven. Well, I guess you can't really know if my word is good, but I reckon you've learned by now that my money is good, and there's another hundred dinars, or maybe a bit more, that's waiting for you if you do me this last little favor. So what do you say? Again, I need the money. <laughs> Alright, I'll lead your men. Splendid! It's been a long time since I staked so much on a single throw of the dice, and frankly, I find it exhilarating. My men are ready to move on your word. Are you ready? Yes. Give them the sign. Good. Now strike hard, strike fast, and a captain and his henchmen won't know what hit them. May the heavens be with you. Well, I don't think he's there, so I won't be hitting him. You leave the tavern and go out to the streets. Nervous-looking young men are waiting in every street corner. You can see they have daggers and clubs concealed under their clothes and catch a mixture of fear, anticipation, and pride in the quick looks they throw at you as you pass by. Praying that your enemies have not been alarmed by this all-too-obvious bunch of plotters, you check your weapons for one last time and prepare yourself for the action ahead. That's why I bought the helmet. Sure. It's just the rest of me I have to protect now. <laughs> it's time, lads. Up and at him. And... And just like that, a whole bunch of people are falling. Because why not? It's like, I guess all the towns people really did was, I don't know, set the guards up to do something. And there, there's a good chance I'm not even going to see any of this action. It just depends. Sometimes the looters get such an advantage in the beginning that they steamroll everything and then you're left fighting. And you can lose this battle and still get the money. Like, well, I counted for one. Ooh, didn't, didn't see the guy. Eesh. Oh, see? He got behind me and the mouse just kind of... I mean, that was partly me, partly the mouse. But see, I, I lost, but I didn't lose. You fall down with that last blow, unable to move and trying hard not to pass out. Soon the sounds of fighting filling the streets give way to the cheers of the townsmen, and you realize with relief that your side won today. Soon friendly arms pick you up from the ground, and you let yourself drift off to a blissful sleep. Hours later, you wake up in the merchant's house. That was rather embarrassing, but hey. You win some, you lose some. My hit points need time to recover. Merchant of Praven. Oh, then. Ha! Oh, you're alive. That's a relief. You took quite a blow there. I'm not sure that you got any of them yourself. I took one. But thankfully, the rest of us were able to beat them. We'll need to see about getting you some treatment. Unfortunately, about eight of my lads got themselves wounded. Most died. I should go look on, on them. Look in on them. Right. I suppose I should be more careful. Yes, yes. Now, a couple of my boys have the watch captain pinned down in a back room with a knife at his throat. I'll need to go drag him before King Harlos and explain what this breach of the peace is all about. You don't need to be part of that, though. I'll tell you what. If all goes well, I'll meet you in the tavern again shortly and let you know how it all came out. If you don't see me in the tavern, but instead see my head on a spike over the city gate, I'll assume you know enough to stay out of town for a while and forget this whole episode ever happened. So, hopefully we'll meet again! Yep, hopefully. Anyway, nothing more to do in this scene. It's actually the last time we're going to see this room. Not quite the last time we'll see this guy. Okay.
in the tavern. He's really not kidding. He'll meet you there immediately. And we talk to him one last time. Ah, oh, Johan von Droya. Things didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. King Harlots couldn't quite find it in him to overlook my little breach of the peace. Oh, he's grateful enough that I got rid of his crooked captain. A guard who will let in bandits will let in an enemy army if the price is right. But he can't exactly have me running around here as a lasting reminder of his failure to take care of things himself. Well, maybe he should have thought about that and taken care of things himself. That hardly seems fair. Fair? This is Calvaria, my boy. Kings do what they will, and the rest of us do as they must. He didn't string me up, and instead gave me time to sell my properties, even put in a word with the other merchants that they best pay me a fair price, too. That's gracious enough as kings go. But he's a weak king, as they all are here. Weak kings must always look to their authority first, and justice second. I suppose I do the same in his shoes. Anyway, I wouldn't go rubbing your part in this affair in King Harlas's face. I'm too embarrassed to seriously stab him back from a looter is just lame. But he's taken note of you, and decided that you're not worth hanging, and that's something to which I'll raise a glass any day of the week. He might even have work for you further down the road. Or you can sell your sword to one of his competitors. Anyway, I hope you've learned a bit about what it will take to stay alive in this troubled land, and I suspect that the money you've earned won't go to waste. Good luck. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this quest line. I think the end of this level. I'm left with 4 health. 1,048 out of the 1,360 experience I need to level up to 3. Definitely taking the next level of Charisma next time. Leadership gets boosted at that point. And other than that, have a wonderful night. This has been Journeyman Gaming, and I hope to see you again real soon.